Hey guys, Henning and Morden from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are just going to be talking a little bit about the new Intel Open Image Denoiser that was implemented in Blender 2.81. So if you want to check that out for yourself, go to the nightly builds and, and download the latest version. It should be in there for you to check out. It's actually pretty cool. Um, you know, Blender does have a default denoiser in it. Uh, I haven't had that great results with it so far. But uh, I will say the Intel Open Image Denoiser so far is producing some pretty crazy results. And like you can see this on Twitter as well. People are pretty, like posting stupid examples of rendering with one sample and all of a sudden they have like a finished image that would take 10 hours to render. So there's definitely some crazy AI improvements that Intel have done to their uh, Denoiser. So I'm very excited to see how this is going to evolve. Yeah, denoising is really one of the coolest areas of CG today because it's not just brute forcing something or trying to make something faster. It's a whole new tool we haven't had before. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. So just to start off with, just to make it clear, like when you're using the denoiser, the new denoiser in Blender, that's a compositing pass. You know, everything happens in comp, so it's post-render. So the first thing we want to do is enable the if you go to the render passes and enable the denoise data you can see that that just adds our, our passes to our render layers here and another thing i want to do just quickly it's just for comparison's sake is an is enable the normal pass so there is a denoising normal pass and we'll talk about that but i also just want the regular normal pass and then we simply hit render so this is rendering with uh, the cartoon example of one sample which you will never use <laughs> but it's just to it's just to give you an idea of the power of this denoiser and how do you uh, make the render appear down in the ui and not as a floating window yeah so if you just go to render um and say display mode to keep your user interface instead of new window it'll just keep your ui the same you won't have to deal with like pop-ups or, or anything like that you can just customize this to be uh, you know, your viewer node here and your render result here. So it's just so we have something to compare to after we apply the denoiser. So uh, simply shift A, add your denoiser in your comp and put it in between this and the viewer and immediately it'll start denoising. So already here we have a okay result, I suppose, especially for one sample. And other than that, we just want to pipe in, let's start with the regular way to do this. We use the denoising normal, pipe that in, and it'll do a little bit there, a little bit of refresh, and then the denoise albedo as well. And we'll pipe that in. And there you go. So now we have a denoised image, which was rendered with one sample. That's full HD, I think, and it took like a second, uh, seven seconds to render pretty cool i mean this is like it has uh, metallic objects there's uh, reflective objects there's refractive objects there's there's caustics on the floor we're using an hdri so all in all this is a pretty cool result especially for for one one sample and a seven second render it's pretty <laughs> awesome now keep in mind here that you're watching this with youtube compression on top of it yeah so it, that might be cheating you into thinking it looks better than it looks because it looks pretty good but like you're not going to be rendering with one sample like no. it, there's some serious heavy lifting being done here by the denoiser so and the reason i enable the normal regular we, we decided to call the regular normal pass and not the normal normal pass because that would be confusing is because the denoising passes are anti-aliased so if we just plug in the denoising normal into our viewer, you can see that you know the edges are smooth, which means they're aliased. And the same thing happens across surfaces. The normal pass gets us like it smooths things out just a tiny, tiny bit. In my experience, using the regular normal pass, which is an aliased pass, gives you a crisper result. It's kind of like Henning and I talked about this briefly before we started recording. It's kind of comparable to if you have a depth pass, like a C-depth pass. Your C-depth pass, you also don't want that to be anti-aliased because especially on overlapping objects like this, anti-aliasing will then produce you know pixels from the previous or like whatever is behind it it'll put that into the object in front so you can get this mixing that happens yeah it bleeds it blends the two objects together when in reality you want a really sharp distinction between them yeah so i found that this kind of happens like with youtube compression this is going to be really hard to see i think 
but maybe up here you'll be able to see like one pixel of, of difference you see this like halo effect that's just on the border here um, if we plug in the regular normal pass here this changes a little bit and i feel like it minimizes it see like the halo went in here instead of being out here so it just tightens things up a little bit and gives you some crisper edges but you know all use cases they, they could all be different for you know so maybe for you this will work but in some cases uh, you might be better off just using the regular uh, denoise normal pass so one thing that i've been testing a lot and and i've talked to people on twitter and looking through forums there doesn't really seem to be like a consensus yet on how to use the albedo passes and people came up with crazy solutions for like what you should plug into your albedo for me the denoising albedo pass is also uh, anti-aliased but you do want this for the albedo pass i tried recreating the albedo pass from scratch meaning in under your light here under your passes if you enable diffuse color glossy and transmission because i have i have both glossy and transmiss transmissive objects you can actually make these passes yourself and then you just uh, add them together with a uh let's see like a mix node so just take that mix node and then you just take these different passes you know plug those in combine combine and then plug those into the albedo now when i did that i actually got a worse result than just using the regular i guess the denoising albedo pass so i would just stick to the denoise albedo pass for me personally that's given me the best result so far so that's that's what i would yeah and keep in mind that this is very early days for it mm. where you know we're still trying to figure out as a community like how to actually work with this yeah so we're very much open to suggest suggestions as well on how to really make this awesome and if uh, if you're rendering with like an hdri like this in the background i don't actually know if it it does anything in terms of the denoising but if you look at the denoise albedo you can see that it actually includes the environment if you want that to be included in your manual albedo pass which is going to be uh, aliased by the way uh, not anti-aliased like the denoising one you want to go ahead and enable the environment as well just so so that gets rendered because then you can combine everything and you'll have an exact replica of this but with aliasing instead of anti-aliasing so let's do that here so now to i guess some more realistic examples of not like uh one one sample what should we do like 16 now maybe 16 is good so again this is like full hd and then let's render that all right 16 samples that looks pretty good i mean this is that's crazy this is only 16 samples uh and with refractive objects caustics nice shadows i think i mean the, these results are pretty crazy and i think the the denoiser is just going to get better and better um if you wanted to use it for like like more final images it, it, obviously it's very very scene dependent what you would need uh maybe you can get away with a few hundred samples instead of a few thousand samples and that's really going to speed up your render time now where i'm not entirely sure on the use case of this is going to be for uh, moving stuff like animation like how does it actually handle um, changing frames the different noise levels between each frame that is something i haven't tested out yet but it tends to be an issue i feel like with a lot of denoisers because that's just inherently a tricky task but i'm sure you know this is made by intel and there's probably a bunch of companies that want to implement it because it's so good so i'm really excited to see what that how that evolves especially for for moving moving images yeah particularly for still images right now it's fantastic the fact that you can just half your samples and yeah. then just have awesome results right away i just want to just quickly just look at that area you can see that this is an area like here there's probably like some reflective caustics refractive caustics going those bounces and stuff the same thing that happens down here like again if we were to maybe like we double this to 32 and we re-render that that would probably look even better yeah 16 is still insanely low <laughs> yeah it's very very low again just double the samples and it just smooths out just a little bit more 
I did uh, experience some issues with this with more with like lower ref how do you even say that like when you have more refractiveness uh, when it's not as rough basically yeah like a glass yeah basically like the smoother it is like the more the light for some reason seems to bounce around in it and and that produces a lot of kind of firefly looking effects and that's really hard for the denoiser to work with what i did find was actually like just not including an albedo pass at all just made that result a lot better but obviously then you suffer everywhere else in the image uh so you probably don't want that maybe you could like super hack it with like a mat or something for the object that's mega refractive and then exclude that i don't know you know you can make up a lot of things here that's why it's also cool that you have the ability to make like with this setup you could make your own albedo pass even though it's aliased um, and you'll have a lot more control you have more control over individual channels so you can go in and for example the transmissive color you could tweak that to see if you could optimize the the denoising or for the albedo pass there but yeah i mean that's that's pretty much it for the intel denoiser so far it's definitely something that we're going to keep our eye on and probably do more videos on in the future as this gets updated and just gets better and better but let us know if you want to see more videos about denoising. I don't know if it's like a super exciting subject, but it's definitely very interesting in the field of CG, I feel. And with Blender, you know, being open source and getting access to all these things very, very quickly, it's definitely something that we could jump on. So, you know, leave a comment down below, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And thanks for watching.